Hello and welcome. This is Angie with thecountrysheetcottage.net. So today we're going to talk about different ways to make a stencil with your Cricut. We're going to compare stencil vinyl with removable vinyl as well as permanent vinyl to see which of those three makes the best stencil. This video is sponsored by Cricut. However, all projects and opinions are my own. So which is better? We have stencil vinyl that's made specifically to make stencils with your Cricut machine and it's self-adhesive. And then you have different types of adhesive vinyl, both removable as well as permanent. Which one makes the best stencil? First, let's do a comparison between the three and then we'll make a project. So we're gonna compare three different items. We have stencil vinyl from Cricut, and then we have two different types of adhesive vinyl from Cricut. One is permanent, one is removable. We're gonna test all three of these on a piece of wood with chalk paint. So what I'm gonna do is paint this piece of wood white, and then we're gonna stencil with all three of these in a dark blue over the top. We're gonna cut the same stencil from all three materials to get a fair comparison, and then use them along the same board again for a fair comparison. So let's first paint this board white, allow it to dry, then cut the three materials with the same stencil. So here's the board and I've painted it white, allowed it to dry completely, and now we can cut our stencils. The stencil vinyl goes face up on the mat and then we'll add it to our Cricut machine with the fine point blade installed. I'm using my Cricut Maker, however, the Cricut Explore or the Cricut Joy will work with this. And we have stencil vinyl picked from the material list. Then once that's done cutting, we can remove that from the machine, change our material setting to vinyl, and once again, cut with the fine point blade. Then we can remove this material from the machine. Now this is the removable vinyl and now we'll cut the permanent vinyl. So we'll just add that to the machine in the same way. And press the C to cut. Now let's take a look at weeding and using these stencils. All right, so here are all three of these cut. Just a few notes about cutting each of these. They all go face up on the mat, and I used either a green or blue mat for all of them. It worked fine. And then after that, you can remove the material from the mat. And then all of them will need to be weeded in some way. So this one is the permanent. So the gold is the permanent. The patterned is the removable. And then this blue is the stencil vinyl. The first thing I'm gonna do is weed each one of these. So I'm gonna weed the vinyl just like I was going to apply it to something. So we are going to remove everything around the outside edge. And then we will remove each of the inside pieces. Now for the stencil vinyl, I'm gonna go ahead and weed it in the same way. You can try to just pick it up. So you could just try to pick up that inside piece that is your actual stencil and not weed away all this excess. I always feel better weeding away all this excess. And then I have something to put it back on. So the stencil vinyl is supposed to be reusable, whereas removable or permanent vinyl, when you go to take it off, it's gonna stretch and distort, so it or even tear. Like a lot of times it tears when you try to pick it up. 
so it would not actually be able to be reused. So that's one of the reasons I actually weed all of them and I just use a weeding tool and pick up the middles. So I'm going to weed all three of these and then we'll apply them to our board and start our paint test. All right, so here are our three stencils weeded completely. So we have the stencil vinyl, removable vinyl, permanent vinyl. And for each of these, we're gonna apply them to the same painted board. So this is a wood board, slightly rough in texture, but I am gonna apply them all to the same board. And I wanted that slight roughness because that's the main problem I have with stenciling is <laughs> that I always wanna do it on wood and there's a little slight rough texture. So for each of these, I'm gonna peel them back from the backing paper. Now, you can use transfer tape for this process. So you can apply the transfer tape. Um, we might do that with one of the vinyls. For the stencil vinyl, I think I'm just gonna to try to peel it back. So the stencil vinyl has less stretch and won't tear as easily as regular vinyl. All right, I also wanted to note that I painted the board yesterday. So it has had overnight to dry. I do recommend allowing your paint to cure before you do any stenciling project. Um, just allow that base coat to cure a little bit. It will help make sure that your stencil does not peel up your base coat of paint. So then we'll just apply this where we want it to go. And then we can use something like the scraper tool to start applying it down. And then we want to burnish it down really, really well and get it really stuck. So I like a pretty large scraping tool for this. You can use a smaller one and just go over more times. And we want to go over in multiple directions and take note of any bubbles that might appear and just kind of work those out. All right, so now let's apply our other two stencils and we'll use transfer tape for this. You can use the transfer tape for that first one for that stencil vinyl. And just a regular grit transfer tape works for all three of these. So if you're using the transfer tape, you just peel back the backing and I'm just gonna use the same piece of transfer tape for both. You can reuse transfer tape a bunch of times. We'll just put that over our design, press it down well. I like to flip it over, peel that backing paper away, and then we'll just apply this to the center. Again, this is the removable vinyl. And once again, we will just Press it really, really well, all directions. And let's peel it back and then press it some more. All right, and I'm just gonna take this transfer tape and I'm gonna put it over here on our next stencil. And then we'll come over here to this one. And we're just gonna burnish that down once again. We're looking for any bubbles. And then we'll apply our next one, which is the permanent. We'll just peel this back. And we can apply that to the board as well.
All right, and then once again, we're gonna burnish this really well, all directions, look for any bubbles. And I'll probably go over each of the three of these one more time, just looking for any bubbles, any gaps I see. And now we're ready to try some painting. All right, a few stenciling tips and tricks. The first is to use a stencil brush. So this is a pouncer brush. And the second is to do really light coats painting from the top down. So this is just like general stencil, like practice that will help make your projects a little better. So you wanna go from the top down. You don't wanna go from side to side. And using a stencil brush helps you with that. And light coats are much better than heavy coats. So if we were to do like three light coats over the surface, that would be much better than one heavy coat. So what I'm gonna do is go over all three of these. I'm using a blue paint so we can see any bleeding. So we can kind of, that'll be our comparison between these is how much bleed we have. The second thing I wanna say is for stenciling, what I could have done is went over this first with a white coat, allowed that to dry, and then started my blue. And what would happen is anything that bled would be white and that would kind of block any bleeding that's blue. And I could have also ran painter's tape along these edges to make sure I didn't go over the edge. But since this is a test, I wanted to not do the white coat first. I wanted to just do the blue because we want to see which of these vinyls perform better when stenciling. Now, if you don't have a white base coat, so let's say you are stenciling on top of something that is wood and it's stained, let's say, or just plain wood. A lot of people do a coat of decoupage over the top and then they start adding the paint um, after that decoupage is dried. So you can, you can definitely try those methods. It kind of seals up any holes you have in your stencil. But our goal here is to see which of these stencils performs the best so that we know which one to use when we want to stencil. Then you can use all those tips and tricks for getting it to bleed less once you have the best material possible for your stenciling needs. So I'm just gonna keep doing this straight over the top for this one and then move on to my other two stencils, repeating the exact same procedures for all of those. And then we'll peel them back and see which one bleeds the most, which one bleeds the least, so we know which one to buy when we want to stencil something with our Cricut. So here I am stenciling the last of this removable vinyl. And then I'm gonna move on to the permanent. And if you'll notice, I have finished the stencil vinyl and I'm allowing it to dry a little bit. Um, you can remove these wet or dry. I kind of like somewhere in the middle. Um, I like to let it dry a few minutes so it's not so wet that I tend to get it everywhere. Like it's all over my hands and as I pick it up, my hands get on my wood surface. Um, so I do like to let it dry a little bit, but not 100% completely. So I don't like to let it dry overnight or anything like that. So I will we'll actually finish this one, stenciling this one, and then we will remove start removing from the first on over to the last. Here are all three painted, and now I'm gonna start removing this first one. So it's slightly dry, and this is our stencil vinyl, and I'm just gonna start peeling it up from one edge and peeling it across. And as I peel, you can see how clean or not each of these are. So this one is pretty clean. I see a couple of small bleeds. And I might, depending on if we don't get any large bleeds, um, I might have to hold this up. So this one is, I am getting some tearing as I'm tearing this up. So I don't think I could reuse this. So one of the benefits of stencil vinyl is it's supposed to be reusable. And I actually, I got another tear. So I actually don't think I could reuse this one at all um, because it is tearing up as I'm pulling it back. So just to note that. So 
So I'm not even going to worry about tearing it at this point because I have several tears. And this is what I was talking about, about making sure it's at least somewhat dry is just so you don't get your hands all over your project. And I recommend like keeping a rag close by and then you can just kind of wipe your hands off as you peel up. All right, so there is stencil vinyl on the Cricut. All right, once again, clean hands and we're gonna start peeling up this removable vinyl that we used as a stencil. Again, it's tearing as I'm pulling it up, so I would not be able to reuse this at all. And unless there's any like huge bleeds, I'll probably just compare the bleeds at the end and we'll just kind of try to take a closer look because all I'm seeing is just small areas so far. All right, and then there are just a couple of pieces that are left on here. And I may just kind of try to pick them up with this and then peel them back. And one more small piece. All right, so there is the removable Cricut vinyl used as a stencil. Again, I'm gonna clean my hands just so it's the same and we'll remove this permanent vinyl. All right, so let's remove this last one. So one thing I did wanna note, if you're gonna do multiple coats, you will of course need to allow your paint to dry completely before you lift it up. So I would just do it really slow and make sure that your stencil is not pulling up your paint. So what can happen is your paint can actually dry to the stencil um, and create like a bond between the stencil and the paint. And then it tr the paint tries to lift as a sheet sometimes, um, which is why I try not to wait. So just to note that. Um, so we're just gonna, again, this is ripping. So again, not reusable. None of them are reusable. So I don't think that matters at this point. We're just gonna kind of try to pull it up. And this one is the permanent vinyl. So it is really stuck down which is kind of a problem as I'm trying to remove it. So on this one, I will take the camera and give a, you a closer look, but um, I'm getting some adhesive residue because it's that permanent vinyl and the adhesive is so strong. Um, so I would have to have like a whole nother method of removing that, especially on something that's white like this, which would be kind of a pain. So now that it's removed from all three, let's take a closer look at the results. All right, so now let's take a super close look at the results. So this one is the stencil vinyl. You can see maybe a little bleed and I mean a few really small areas. It's really actually fairly clean. I'm overall impressed. Next is the removable. So the removable overall looks pretty good. I feel like you can see right in here some bleed. I feel like the bleed is a little more. There's some bleed on that one, um, some bleed on this one. So I feel like it's a little bit more than the stencil vinyl. So removable vinyl, although like a super good choice, like it's fairly clean, you would have a little bit more bleed than the stencil vinyl. The benefit to me for the removable vinyl is you might have some like in your stash that you don't like the color of anymore. And so it's kind of like almost free to use this as a stencil. All right, so this is the permanent vinyl. And first of all, hopefully you can see that is where some of the adhesive is still on this board. So I would have to like work to try to get this adhesive off, which I don't like at all. The stencil itself is really clean but I would not use the permanent, at least on this wood, because I wouldn't want to have to remove that adhesive residue. So for me, the permanent vinyl is out. 
So now that you've seen that my favorite is stencil vinyl, let's use stencil vinyl to make a cute project. So we're actually gonna make this entire project with our Cricut Maker and a few supplies, even cutting the wood tags. Let's take a look at how to do that. So now that I picked one I like best, let's make a project. So we are gonna use some basswood on our Cricut Maker. So I get asked all the time how to make those door tags that everyone's making and where you buy the tag shape. Why not just cut it on your maker? You'll need one package of the six by 12 basswood from Cricut and there's four pieces in the package and it's perfect for making this project. Then we're gonna use the stencil vinyl. We're gonna use some transfer tape if we need it to transfer our stencil. And I'm gonna use white paint as well as like this chalky brownish gray paint. So first let's cut our basswood on the Cricut maker. All right, so here are all of our pieces cut. So what I did is cut four of these wood tags from the basswood, and then I put them together with glue and painted one side. So I did this yesterday so that these would be good and dry for our stenciling project. So I just painted the one side, I just left the other side blank. And again, this is two of the tags put together, so you'll need four tags total cut with a knife blade. And we do have a tutorial on cutting wood, and I will link to that in the description below, as well as the cut file for this project if you want to make it. One of these we are gonna stencil with a all over plaid pattern and the other one we're gonna stencil with Farm Sweet Farm. So I painted these with this chalky grayish brown color, and then we are going to add the stencil in white. We're gonna use the exact same procedure for stenciling as we did for our sample piece. I am gonna use transfer tape to transfer these, especially this one with the centers of the letters. Just put our transfer tape down. squeegee down really well, and then pull back the backing paper. So the stencil vinyl works like any vinyl if you want to use the transfer tape with it. And then this one is our Farm Sweet Farm, and we're just gonna kind of locate this on the tag. So we're gonna use this more of like a mask so I'll just start at the bottom, work my way up. And again, we just want to get that pressed down really well so that we get minimal seepage underneath the stencil. And then we'll peel back this transfer tape. Just make sure everything stays on your board. Here are both our pieces with the stencil vinyl applied. And now we can go ahead and paint these. On these, I'm gonna use even a lighter coat than I did before just for the look. So I want like a really rustic kind of worn look and you can get that with a dry brush technique. So I'm just gonna make sure my stencil's down really well on this one. And then we are going to use that same round brush, but this time we're gonna try to get as much paint off as possible and then kind of start over here to the side and work our way towards the stencil. And you can see how some of the grayish paint is kind of showing through and that's the look we want. We can kind of start pulling that away. And I'm pulling away from the stencil, dabbing. Then once I get so little paint on my paintbrush, just kind of pull away. This kind of gives me a rustic, worn look to the paint without any sanding or anything like that. And because this is kind of a farmhouse style, 
I want that rustic worn look. And I am still going with the grain of the wood. And for these letters, I'm gonna get most of the paint off my paintbrush. And then we'll just go into the letters and go over them really, really lightly. And again, once almost all the paint's off, I can kind of push the paint around a little to get that worn look. And I'm going over super light when I do this. So I'm gonna continue the same paint method for this entire piece as well as this one. And then we can remove our stencil and reveal our finished design and finish this project. This is such a light coat of paint that it's drying almost as soon as I apply it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one off before I paint this one. Just kind of pick up on the stencil and start peeling that back. And I'll have to come back and get like the centers of the letters and things like that. But you can see our gorgeous farmhouse sign starting to take shape. Now I can repeat the same process as this one for the plaid version. Here's the second tag painted with the same paint technique. We can just peel back this stencil to reveal our design. Now we can allow these to dry and finish our project. You can finish this one however you would like. I'm gonna add a little like burlapy looking ribbon, but you could definitely add some color on this portion if you would like. We're gonna stack these together and you want the Farm Sweet Farm to will be at this angle and then you want the, um, the one on the bottom to come out like maybe at like a 45 degree angle. And then we wanna glue these together. Hot glue works fine for this portion and you just wanna glue where the two pieces are touching one another. So I'm just gonna put a little glue in this area then lay those two on top of one another and press down. And it definitely does not have to be exact. Then what I'm gonna do is just add my piece of ribbon. Leave a loop for hanging and then a little bit more to make just a tie and I'm just gonna tie this in a knot. Then we'll kind of gather this, tie it in a knot and cut off any excess. Then you can cut out the excess you can make tails on your ribbon just by folding it in half and cutting it at an angle. And there we have a cute farmhouse hanger for your door. Now are you ready to dive in? Grab that stencil vinyl from Cricut as well as a few supplies. Make this project or any other project that you want to stencil on with your stencil vinyl. And now you know that the stencil vinyl makes a really great stencil and how it compares with the other types. Now, you did see that the removable vinyl is somewhat similar. I did like the stencil vinyl a little better, 
But if you have some Cricut removable vinyl in your stash, maybe it's a color you didn't like or whatever, there's no harm in giving it a try for a stencil. Like worst case scenario, you paint over it and try again with the stencil vinyl. It's, it's paint. It can be painted over. Like I always like to experiment with paint because it's like so easy to just start all over again. The only thing if if you have the permanent version, so the permanent vinyl from Cricut, I did have that issue with some of the adhesive being left on. So I don't know if I would recommend kind of experimenting with that unless you are okay with losing the surface. If you have some extra wood laying around and just want to experiment, by all means do that. In the description below, I've dropped some links for you. I dropped some links for where to buy all three, including the stencil vinyl where to buy the supplies for the project, the cut file for the project. I even dropped the cut file for the stencil that I used for the comparison, just in case like you are wanting to make a stencil like that for a project, you can find that easily. So I'll drop all those links below. But if you have any questions, anything we've done today, you don't find a link in the description below that you think you should, then you can absolutely ask those questions in the comment section below. If you liked this video, if it helped you, if you learned something new, please, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? We have videos like this every single week. So at least one Cricut video a week and you don't want to miss any of those. So be sure to head on over there and subscribe and scroll through those past videos because you might find something that you like and something else you want to make with your Cricut. So thank you all so much for joining me today and I will see you next week with another fun Cricut video. Thanks. Bye-bye.